everybody, Gandor here again. As I stated in my last video, I have been waiting for a few things to arrive in order to show you all. I'm still waiting on certain items, but one of the items finally came in. After a bit of a wait, I finally got my wow stick. If you're not familiar with what this is, it's basically a battery operated screwdriver that is not much thicker than my finger. If you struggle with arthritis, carpal tunnel, have slightly shaky hands, like to do work with small electronics like cell phones, uh, handheld consoles, drones, and things with tiny or security screws, then this might be a product for you. I've been wanting one of these for a while now, and I finally have one and I would like to share it with you as well. And here it is. The Wow Stick 1F Plus. This model comes with 56 different bit attachments and a few accessories. I purchased this one as I thought it was the best bang for my buck at the time. So now that we have a basic idea as to what is supposed to be inside, Let's open up the box and see what it looks like before we go into technical specs. Let's take the front cover off. And the first thing that we are greeted with is the screw pad. Now this is a magnetic screw pad. This is a little pad that you can use to place your screws down. And as I said, it is magnetic and it will hold your screws in place while you work on them so they don't roll around. Let's see what else we have. Now actually it comes po uh, boxed up rather nicely. It kind of looks kind of nice inside of here, but let's see what else we have. The next thing we have is the accessory case. This is a little nice white accessory case for storing your screwdriver and some of the bits. It's magnetic. Closes really nice. I kind of like it. What else do we have? We have the first set of bits. This is the group number one of bits and inside we have everything is really nicely packaged they will say that much aha so on each one of these it appears that they have a list of what it is that is inside of each one of these bit accessory packs and apparently you open it from here and it comes out and exposes all of the bits. Kind of a nice little tree, easy to get to, nice place to store your bits, keeps them all well protected. This one looks like it has various hex bits, some flatheads, some Phillips. This is the basic hex group or basic group number two. Another set of bits. This one appears to have some security Torx bits and some Y bits. And it looks like a hex shank. And just like the other one, you just open it up and they all pull out nice. And everything is nicely stored and easy to get to and easy to see. This is the bit set number three. I think these things are numbered because if I remember correctly, I believe I see uh, where you can actually buy these bits separately. This is bit number three, and it looks like we have some uh, triangular bits. Uh, we have some square bits and a few others inside of here. 
couple more flat heads it looks like. No, it's on the square. Some of the Y bit attachments, or Y blades. Yeah, there we go, not too bad. And here we have the actual driver itself. Now remember I said this wasn't much thicker than my finger. And there it is. Not too bad. It appears that there's a USB charging port right there. Let's test that out, shall we? I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a red light there that shows that it's charging. What else do we have? Ooh, this is a nicely weighted base, I believe. It's got some weight to it, really. Yet it still doesn't want to come out of the box. This is a nicely little weighted base, and it's a place for you to place your screw pen driver so that if you want to charge it or just store it and, and keep it out of the way, it'll stand upright for you. And again, it does have some weight to it. That's pretty heavy. And we have one more box in here. And inside here we have... A very small charging cable. Kind of wish they would have included a longer one, but at least we have one. We also have a suction cup for removing screws off of cell phones and whatnot. So in other words, if you wanted to work on a screen, you could place it down and actually Cool. Well, that got a lot of suction to it. Wow, that's not coming off easy. And we have a little pry tool or a little spudging tool for getting in between the cracks and trying to break the cases apart without damaging the plastic. Kind of nice little thing to have. We have a tip magnetizer and demagnetizer. These have proved useful a couple of times in my career. And the last item that we have is a little teeny tiny jar for storing screws. And it even comes with a few screws in it already. How nice. Oh yeah. Several different types of screws, different sizes, different lengths. That could come in handy. And really the only thing that's left, it looks like to be a very simplistic manual. One in appears to be Chinese and one in English. And if you can read this, well, then you've got better eyesight than I do. So, because I certainly can't read that. It's way too small. So now that we have seen what's inside, let's go over the specs, shall we? Now through the magic of editing, I can spare you the time that it took me to actually use this a few times and also the time that it took me to print this really nice little 3D holder that I found on Thingiverse. It seemed like a nicely designed holder, so I went ahead and printed it. And honestly, I rather like it. Keeps everything that I need right in front of me, easy to see, easy to get to, stores it and keeps it out of the way. Now for the specs for this thing. The specs are as follows. The driver has an all aluminum body and is battery powered through its rechargeable lithium battery. It has forward and reverse rotation <clears throat> and it has three LEDs at the tip for illumination. Now the description for the amount of force that this puts out can be misleading. So let me try and clear this up a bit. It has two modes of operation, either electrical mode or manual mode. Basically, 
If the battery dies, you can still use this as a typical screwdriver in manual mode. In electrical mode, it'll rotate at 200 revolutions per minute and it will deliver 0.15 newton meters, which is roughly 1.33 inch pounds or 0.11 foot pounds of torque. In manual mode, you can exert up to 3 newton meters or roughly 26.55 inch pounds or about 2.2 foot pounds of torque before you will begin to overwhelm the internal gearing system. What this boils down to is that you may need to have to turn the screwdriver itself before you press the button to break the screw free, especially if the screw has Loctite or something similar on the threads. I know it sounds rather counterintuitive and sounds useless, but in honesty, it isn't that bad, since it only takes a small turn to break them free and saves you from a ton of repetitive twisting, allowing you to unscrew them faster than most people can turn a screwdriver. Plus, when you tighten them, it does a decent job of seating the screws and prevents them from being over-tightened and reduces the probability of stripping a screw head. Now, the battery is rated at 1600 milliamp hours and is charged using a micro USB cable and charges in about 45 minutes. I haven't had an opportunity to test this, so I will have to take them at their word for that. And as of yet, I don't know how long this will last on a single charge with continuous use. There's a wide assortment of bits that should cover just about any situation that you can come across, as you can see here. We have the standard Phillips, flathead, hex, and various security screws. And there are three bit slots, Y bits, security torques, etc. Now the bits themselves are four millimeter bits, which means that you can't use standard quarter inch bits like you would with a standard drill driver or similar type of screwdriver. You would need to get an adapter for that, but honestly, I suspect that anything that requires a bit of that size would be more than likely to prove too much for this to handle properly. It really is designed for smaller electronics and screws. The included magnetic screw pad has a grid layout on it and allows you to lay out the screws on the mat and place them in the order and orientation of how they came out. The pad is also rather thick and has a good weight to it and seems well made. Having the included pry tool and the suction cup is a nice bonus, especially if you work with things like cell phones or anything that requires you to pull a screen off. Now the other accessory as I had mentioned before was the magnetic uh, tip magnetizer demagnetizer. This allows you to make the tip either magnetic or non-magnetic depending on the situation. You may not want a magnetized tip if you're working on say a hard drive. Now if you don't need all of these attachments you can get one in several different modes each having their own set of assorted bits and accessories. There's the wow stick 21 in 1 that has 20 bits and there's the WOW Stick 1P Plus 19-in-1. If you're looking for something a bit heftier, there is the SD63, which is a larger version of this device and comes with 36 assorted bits, but also puts out more torque. Now, just like its little brother, it has two modes of operation. In electrical mode, it puts out 0.9 newton meters, or roughly 7.96 inch pounds, or 0.66 foot pounds of torque. In manual mode, it can deliver up to 5 newton meters, or 44.25 inch pounds, or roughly 3.68 foot pounds of torque. Now that model does use the larger quarter inch bits, since it is a bit beefier than its smaller sibling. If you need something that uses the bigger bits for jobs around the house and such, then you might want to consider that model at around $40. I paid $39.99 for, for what uh, I bought. And I got that on sale at a site called GearBest. But their prices fluctuate depending on what promotions or sales they have going on. 
On Amazon, the cheapest I found it was for about $48.99. When I went to find these on Amazon, all I could find primarily was the 1F model and the SD63. It wasn't until I went looking at some of their lesser known obscure sites, such as Gearbest and the likes, that I was able to easily find the other models. And they have a bunch of accessories from what I can also ascertain. I've used this to take the screws off my laptop to get to the hard drive, repair my drone rotor blades, and a few other little things here and there. So far, it's worked like a champ with no issues. About the only thing I sh should, ha or I think it should have, is a button to turn the LED lights on. As now, the only way to turn the lights on is to physically activate the motor on the screwdriver. It would be nice to be able to see what I'm trying to go to or get to without having to activate the motor each and every time. Overall, I think this is going to be a nice addition to my tool set. There have been many times when I've had a ton of screws to undo and after a while it gets rather tedious having to manually undo each one then having to do it all over again when I put them all back in. Call me lazy, but if you do this kind of thing a lot, you will understand a bit more of what a repetitive process this can be. Again, somebody with carpal tunnel or arthritis will find this very useful. I can see this being used to take the back off of battery covers on toys, replacing covers on light switches, electrical plugs, remotes, electronics, and a ton of other situations. You aren't going to be putting furniture together with this one, but it still has plenty of uses. I will leave links below to where you can find one of these if interested. If not for you, maybe as a gift to someone that likes to tinker. And as always, if you like what you see here, please don't forget to press that subscribe and bell icon to be notified when I release a new video. So until next time folks, be good, be safe, and take care. Bye!